Sir Joshua Reynolds was an 18th century English painter and wrote a book The Discourse of Art in 1797 and which is which focuses on painting and presents ideas about representation Reynolds follows Plato in arguing that highest that the highest and soundest kind of art and of criticism refers to an eternal immutable nature of things and a kind which is the kind the what are these immutable nature of things these are the kind of universal ideal common to all times and all forms of arts purpose of criticism according to joshua is to discover the beauties of fault or fault in particular work of art and artist with reference to its universal ideal but reynolds but joshua reynolds laments that critics are moral and so their assessments of art are subjective and not immutable eternal so reynolds concludes that the solution to what's the solution to this problem and he proposes that it is is that the solution is to try to discover the principles of human nature on which all forms of imaginative art including painting and poetry are founded and that and that then shapes a criticism and aesthetics as aesthetic standard based on those principle ranel proposes all arts have in common that they address the sensibility or imagination as opposed to the ra- rational faculty of the human mind he says in art unlike mathematics the imagination is here the residence of truth and a trained sensibility is based is based on uh, is based and can uh, intuit the truth in a process in which the steps or evidence on which a conclusion is based cannot be retracted sensibility is based on one's collected and collective life experiences rather than on the development of the skills of logical argument reynolds argues that unlike reason intuition happens with no conscious mental effort that one cannot be trained to feel however he says that it is a part of a well trained rational faculty to be able to judge when reason should give way to the feeling and the assessment of the art requires the subordination of reason to sensibility like burke reinhardt argues that painting and literature are not strictly mimetic or imitative and that aesthetic evaluation can't be based upon the accuracy of the rep- of a representation indeed direct imitations constitute the lowest style and level of art which reinhardt says are suitable only for uncultivated mind the more accurate a representation is the more obvious it is refined taste or sensibility is the product of education and practice an exposure to ha- higher forms of art than just accurate imitations painting and poetry both try to gratify the natural human propensity to take pleasure in my mises by means rather than those supplied by nature art adds something to nature that make it to do more than merely represent the natural world poetry for example uses an artificial language such as the hexameter or pentameter 
to improve on the language of common people the artificiality of art according to rylands rynals is a part of of its pleasure the pleasure of painting and poetry comes from its appeal to sensibility and to the love of the kinds of order and congruence where variance and congruence and coherence and consistency that are evident in a created work and not evident in the natural world for rynals the great and of all art is to make an impression on the human faculties of imagination and sensibility not on the faculty of reason thus the basis for a universal standard of criticism and that the time he says the true test as all of all art is not solely whether the production is a true copy of nature but whether it answers the art of of the end answers the end of art which is to produce a pleasing effect upon the mind that was all for today so for more videos follow the channel subscribe the channel and comment in the comment section and the next video is coming about william wordsworth and st coleridge and for more videos like this you can check the playlist given in the description thank you